ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಟು ವಿ ಟಿ ಯು ಇ ಶಿಕ್ಷಣ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ ಮೈಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ವೀರೇಶ್ ತೊಟ್ಟಪ್ಪ ಮಾಗಳರ್ ವರ್ಕಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ಪ್ರೊಫೆಸರ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಡಿಪಾರ್ಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೆಮಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿ ಇನ್ ಅವರ್ ಪ್ರೀವಿಯಸ್ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ಆರ್ ಇನ್ ಯುವರ್ ಪ್ರೀವಿಯಸ್ ವೀಡಿಯೋಸ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಸ್ಟಡೀಡ್ ವೇರಿಯಸ್ ಆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ನ್ಯಾನೋ ಮೆಟೀರಿಯಲ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟುಡ್ ದ ಡೆಫಿನಿಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ನ್ಯಾನೋ ಮೆಟೀರಿಯಲ್ಸ್ and we have understood the classification of uh, nano materials and uh, variety of properties acquired by the nano materials when they do change from their size from bulk to nano materials and later on we have studied some of the say surface size dependent properties like surface properties optical properties electrical properties mechanical and magnetic properties so so on and uh, today we are going to study a very very important uh, aspect of nano materials various synthesis methods we are going to discuss in this video i wholeheartedly welcome you to the world of this uh, synthesis of nano materials <laughs> see my dear uh, students say synthesis of uh, nano materials can be you know achieved by two ways one is bottom up approach and another one is top down approach say when uh, you are saying that you know bottom up approach we are going to you know make possible for you know for the preparation of uh, nano materials by aggregating the atomic size of uh, say particles into nano size particles so by using various uh, say uh, chemical methods okay so <clears throat> here as i said smaller components are aggregated or arranged themselves into more complex assemblies okay so to form nano materials whereas top down approach okay bringing down the size of the big bulk material into nano size okay so is called as top down approach so the larger bulkier materials are the starting material here and by reducing them okay by means of uh, some uh, external uh, force like a milling etc okay one can bring the bulkier materials into nano size okay or nano scale so let us have look at uh, this uh, like, let us have some bold i view on this you know various synthesis method like top down approach and bottom up approach so in the top down approach okay so it is a uh, use as uh, it is uh, also called as a physical method okay so here the bigger molecule or bigger uh, uh, material bulkier material is brought into the size of uh, nano sized particles you are seeing here this is a bulkier and it is you know brought into the form of the powdery form and further you know with some techniques it has been okay made arrived to you know nano size this is top down and bottom up means uh, here the atomic level atoms or uh, say materials are uh, made uh, uh, made to come together to form the clusters and thereby arriving at the nano size that is 10 to the power of minus 9 meter okay so thus uh, you know these are uh, very quite uh, different uh, you know, you know, opposite methods bottom up approach is usually you know referred as a uh, physical or you know it is a uh, uh, referred as a uh, physical and uh, chemical method by means of a variety of chemical uh, reactions uh, one can prepare nano materials in the say way, by the way bottom up approach now <clears throat> colloidal dispersion is a good example of 
bottom up approach in the synthesis of nanoparticles you know colloid is a uh, you know state in between atomic uh, you know uh, crystalline and uh, amorphous one and here colloidal dispersion you know it is a good example of a bottom up approach means uh, smaller size uh, uh, particles are brought into the nano size particles okay so milling milling is a typical top down method milling means you know grinding uh, the bulkier materials to transform into the powdery form is called as a milling one and in the bottom up approach nano components are made from precursors either in the liquid or in the solid or in the gaseous phase you know later on you know they are integrated into building blocks within the final material structure and uh, thus we will be arriving at uh, the nano size particles by you know uh, for this to achieve okay we are going to design variety of uh, methods and uh, uh, you are going to arrive at you know uh, the uh, nano particles or in the form of the tubes or wires etc okay so here there are few important uh, methods particularly bottom up approach uh, methods or here to prepare nano materials among them you know sol gel is one and solution precipitation uh, type and method and the gas condensation method chemical vapor condensation method hydrothermal method and uh, lastly you know thermolysis process in this particular session we will make an effort to understand each of these process to the possiblest uh, detailed manner now look at uh, the synthesis of nano materials by the way sol gel process sol gel process you know it is a nano material uh, preparing uh, method which involves several steps like hydrolysis of precursors precursors have to be taken and they have to be hydrolyzed and uh, followed by the condensation will be taking place and polycondensation will be happening to form particles and uh, these you know are allowed to undergo gelation and thereafter we are going to dry you know this uh, gel to obtain a solid material okay so aging means uh, allowing the particle to grow in a bigger size way <coughs> so now <coughs> sol what is a sol sol is a colloidal solution okay, it is made up of solid particles dispersed in a liquid phase likewise here okay dispersed in a liquid phase okay so gel gel is you know liquid particles okay so dispersed in a solid phase okay so we are going to pre uh, prepare sol first and thereafter uh, the precursor undergoes hydrolysis and thereafter it will be taking the jelly form okay likewise lastly you know that gel is undergoing you know we will be allowing that to undergo age, aging process and uh, further we will be making dehydration process okay to arrive at the nano material and uh, <coughs> here as i said the first step is preparation of precursor solution that i mean sol preparation okay sol is a solid particles dispersed in the liquid uh, say phase here the solid uh, particles okay they are called as precursors okay metal alkoxides are chosen as uh, precursors and uh, these metal alkoxides we are representing here as m o r m stands for metal whereas r stands for an alkali group this metal alkoxide 
is dissolved first in the alcohol and then water is added. So, when alcohol is uh, added, uh, precursor is added to the, when uh, if you are taking a beaker and uh, in this uh, you are going to, you know, add this as uh, say, this is uh, metal alkoxide and you are going to dissolve in uh, say alcohol and uh, later you are going to add water. Okay. So, here afterwards the entire you know these precursor will undergo hydrolysis. Okay. So, hydrolysis will be occurring here and uh, as a consequence of this uh, in a sol gel process there are mainly you know two steps one is sol formation and another one is transformation of sol into gel. Now, sol it is prepared by making use of a suitable metal alkoxide which is uh, usually represented by MOR and uh, M stands for here, <coughs> M stands for here metal and where R stands for uh, say organic uh, say moiety in that is alkali group and metal alkoxide when it is first dissolved in alcohol and uh, then followed by water, okay, there will be a hydrolysis, okay. So, as a consequence of uh, this hydrolysis, okay, so this uh, alkoxide, okay, is repl replaced by the hydroxyl uh, group and there will be the formation of metal hydroxide. In the subsequent, as soon as the sol forms, it will be starting transferring into jelly form and uh, here, in the formation of the gel, there will be a polycondensation reaction occurs between the metal hydroxide as well as all say when, when you dissolve metal alkoxide. As soon as the hydrolysis begins, there will be the formation of MOH and MOR. So, these Okay, MOH metal hydroxides uh, they are going to start interacting with uh, solid uh, particles. They are in the liquid phase right now. These are the solid particles like uh, metal alkoxide. They do start interacting with these two with uh, this metal uh, alkoxide and these two interact together to form metal and metal okay, bridged by oxygen atom. And uh, thus, uh, you know, this uh, uh, gel formation will be understood when you are actually preparing by you know uh, the way the jelly gets goes on you know highly viscous uh, mass okay so here after that after that okay aging has to be done this aging means uh, you know uh, the particles will enhance uh, their size and they grow along with that time okay, to form a sol gel monolithic solid. And uh, here is one such example uh, which uh, you know you can make uh, better understand. This is uh, say metal alkoxide, silicon is taken here and this is you know in the presence of alcohol okay, added water there will be the hydrolysis and uh, further this you know condensation will be taking place by reacting with SiOr and SiOH and uh, the Si you know two, Si, uh, 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 two Si are going to be bridged by oxygen here. Okay. So, <clears throat> further aging will be done and uh, here this is you know the precursor in the added to the say solution to form the sol and uh, here in the sol 
you are going to observe the dispersion of uh, solid particles in the liquid and thereafter you know there will be the jelly formation and uh, after aging you know you will be getting the nano nanoparticles uh, in the solid form here okay thus it is very easier to transform okay uh, this uh, any of the desired uh, say metal in uh, into nano size so here <coughs> after the aging process drying will be carried out in the drying usually okay the uh, whatever the water as well as uh, say alcohol excessively added if at all okay slowly when uh, during the drying process they are going to be evaporated completely so by removing these liquids okay so if at all the water molecule binded to metal atoms are there they have to be removed completely by calcining the entire material okay for calcination usually uh, up to 800 degree centigrade temperature is maintained and uh, here all the surface bounded hydroxyl groups uh, are also going to be removed and uh, thus you know there will be the stabilizing uh, you know the stabilization of uh, gel against rehydration if at all any oh group is retained over the surface it will once again interact with water molecule and hydration will be possibility hydration possibility is there therefore that is you know, that is one of the reasons to remove all the say surface bounded hydroxyl atom also by excessive heating and uh, these are allowed to undergo densification and uh, later decomposition okay the gels okay so they are even treated with more than 800 degree centigrade the pores of the gel network are collapsed and uh, the remaining organic contaminants uh, contaminants are also going to be volatilized because uh, you know more than 800 degree centigrade when it is maintained all the organic content can easily easily be you know undergoing uh, volatilization and thus you are going to you know arrive at uh, say the nano material after this uh, say densification and decomposition process and if you look into the entire process this is a very very easier one okay so it is not at all a costlier matter one has to take say a simple beaker in the laboratory and uh, say metal alkoxide has to be chosen appropriately depending upon which uh, metal uh, you know uh, you are thinking to transform into nano size and if you think that you have taken silicon in the form of uh, say uh, metal alkoxide and uh, if you add into the alcohol like methanol or ethanol and thereafter if you add water there will be the hydrolysis and afterwards uh, you know you may add a small one or two drops of uh, hcl also it will be acting as the catalyst so there will be the rapid transformation of this into say jelly form and uh, that gel okay you can you know further allow it to undergo aging process after the aging process okay you need to you know densify that one by heating around 800 degree centigrade and uh, you know by maintaining more than 800 degree centigrade you are able to remove all the associated uh, alcohol water as well as uh, hydroxyl uh, say groups that are attached at the surface of the nano materials completely and hence you will be able to avoid rehydration process so you will you will be easily arriving at uh, the nano particles by this way so what are the, say the advantages means here it uh, you know uh, it has got a very excellent uh, by this way you will be able to maintain excellent stoichiometry in the solution and ease of uh, compositional modifications okay you can very easily tune, tune up the composition okay by adding appropriate quantity of the constituents and customizable customizable microstructure by varying the time for the aging you know you will be able to uh, you know get uh, the desired uh, microstructure in the nanoparticles and then you know ease of introducing various functional groups 
or encapsulating sensing elements okay so by uh, adding you know uh, appropriate functional groups depending upon the applicability okay you are going to use a variety of functional groups and you, you can very easily you know tailor them with the metal over the surface okay so by a suitable method so this is how this is uh, you know going to be very feasible and excellent method for the preparation of nano materials now <coughs> this is a, once again i would like to repeat is a very inexpensive you know why because uh, uh, in the entire process you are not at all using any of the expensive equipment for the transformation of a metal alkoxide into say nano material and uh, now you know would be will be uh, you know going further for the understanding of uh, the next process that is precipitation process okay so this precipitation process is very easier one in its uh, say nature you can even try your level best to conduct this in your uh, college laboratory <clears throat> the method relies upon the precipitation of uh, uh, nano sized particles within a you know continuous fluid solvent i mean you need all what you needed to do is uh, an organic metallic salt you needed to take okay like uh, aluminum salt aluminum aluminum chloride uh, ferric chloride likewise okay or sodium chloride also you can take okay so uh, these salts are going to be dissolved in water and uh, <clears throat> metal cations are going to be hydrolyzed there and there will be the formation of a metal hydrides this is one part and thereafter you need to treat okay this with the sodium hydroxide or ammonium hydroxide okay these are uh, basic in their nature okay so uh, by the addition of these we will be able to get the precipitate okay precipitate of a hydrolyzed species and then you will be you know required to you know go for the filtration process if you filter then easily precipitate will be remained at the top and filtrate will be going out going away and once this uh, you know uh, filtered you know you needed to wash that repeatedly and you need it to dry that and then okay it is subjected to calcination process heating at high temperature in order to obtain the final nano particle okay so uh, this is how you will be arriving at nano sized particles very 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 easily okay so uh we will understand by the way you know uh, this uh, diagram schematic diagram which i have you know prepared in a very easier manner this anion solution and cation solution is there okay cation solution means so metal salt is to be you know uh, put in the water and then hydrolysis will be uh, metal will be getting hydrated that is a cation solution and this is anion solution means uh, you will be taking either uh, sodium hydroxide or ammonium hydroxide okay so then you will be mixing together to form okay a precipitate and uh, that precipitate will be you know allowed to grow excellently and uh, the particles are going to be agglomerated and then it will be you know filtered and uh, say then uh, after the filter uh, filtration okay so the material is subjected to calcination to obtain the nano particles so this is one of the easiest methods of preparation we have understood the sargel process we have understood the precipitation method of uh, preparation of nano materials <laughs> okay now we are just you know we need to understand how you know advantageous if you adopt uh, the precipitation method this method is very very simple and it is widely used for 
the production of a single and multi component oxide nanopowders using optimized reactions and reaction conditions. So, if you look into the journals, research journals, okay, so you will find that you know many of the researchers uh, till today they are heavily dependent on this precipitation method to obtain nanoparticles of their desired. Okay. So, subsequent processing of uh, these uh, say uh, uh, collides can include additional precipitation or uh, on particle surfaces to produce a core shell nanoparticle structure. This is about you know designing further you know after arriving at the nanoparticle you can functionalize very appropriately. Okay. So, <coughs> those are all the advantages associated with uh, the precipitation method. Now, we would like to you know go for the understanding of uh, the method of preparation of nanomaterials by gas condensation method. So, let us try to understand the principle of this particular uh, gas condensation method. <coughs> Here, uh, the bulkier material is taken as a starting material and it is uh, subjected to vaporization. The vapors formed thus are carried, carried okay, by means of an inert gas and uh, vaporization when you are able to, when, when you make you know usually uh, the particles are associated with the heat and uh, you know therefore inert gas is required there in order to avoid the oxidation process and uh, the super uh, you know saturated uh, particles uh, will be there and uh, they will be ag uh, aggregating very very uh, you know fastly in order to avoid that one we may we have to quench them very rapidly for that inert gas is very much essential to flow and uh, <coughs> here okay so uh, in this method usually metal will be taken okay for direct metal itself will be taken and it is subjected to evaporation from the heating uh, uh, you know so source usually um, the indirect heating will be made by induction method likewise okay and uh, there will be the previously evacuated uh, and uh, uh, filled with inert gas uh, uh, at low pressure uh, chamber will be there. Okay. So, if you uh, keep their low pressure, there will be easy of you know movement of these particles in the entire uh, chamber and uh, they will not be condensing rapidly. The metal vapor cools through collisions with the inert gas atoms and condenses into nanoparticles. And uh, the particle size usually you are obtaining in this particular method it varies from 1, one to 100 nanometer and it can be controlled by varying you know the inert gas pressure. If you wish to have the smaller size or bigger size nanomaterials, only the thing is you need to vary the pressure of uh, you know inert gas flow inside. Okay? So, ultimately the particles are con collected and uh, you know uh, they are uh, going to be you know uh, uh, forming the nanomaterial in the denser form. Okay? So, this gas condensation process is one of the well established procedure and uh, for the production of the nanopowders and gas condensation it is a technique for producing nanoparticles particularly for the formation of the nanoparticles in the gaseous phase by condensation of atoms and molecules in the vapor phase. Okay? So, in order to understand this better, we needed to have the schematic diagram and here <coughs> this is a source of the metal and uh, it is heated. When it is getting heated here inside this chamber, okay? so low pressure is maintained and uh, inert gas is you know continuously you know uh, inert gas is uh, you know there in the within the chamber it has got uh, you, you will be 
able to you know uh, uh, vary the size of the particles by varying the pressure inside by flowing uh, in the inert gas and here as the vapors you know vaporize metal vaporizes from the surface they will be just moving inside the chamber and they are hot in their uh, say uh, content and that heat content will be slowly you know uh, will be immediately allowed to you know dissipate into the surrounding inner uh, surrounding and uh, inert gas will be obtaining all that uh, heat and uh, as the particles reach at the surface uh, say this is a collector okay so they are in a nanoparticle size and uh, they will be sticking to here this is somehow cooler part and that will be aggregated and that will be collected okay so in the form of the nano materials and uh, flu gases waste flu gases are uh, allowed to escape out okay frequently and uh, this is how gas uh, condensation method helps us in obtaining the nano particles and now we'll be studying another method that is chemical vapor condensation method okay this is one of the widely okay used method even in the say uh, electronic industries particularly okay so uh, layer by layer deposition can be easily made with the help of the chemical vapor condensation and this technique was first developed you know in the germany in 1994 okay chemical vapor deposition is used to produce metal nuclei in the gaseous phase okay it is a chemical process used to produce high purity and high performance solid materials are going to be obtained by this process this is uh, often used in the semiconductor industry to produce uh, thin films okay so usually the uh, cvd it is a generic name okay so it is kept commonly for the group of processes that involve depositing a solid uh, material from gaseous phase okay don't think that chemical vapor condensation relates only for the say nano material preparation whatever the process that involve the in the form of deposition of a solid material from the gaseous phase it is called as chemical vapor condensation method okay so uh, here would like to understand when a mixture of the gaseous reactants are delivered into a reaction chamber okay so here this is a reaction chamber i would like to show you this is a reaction chamber and this is the precursor and uh, that is heated usually carrier gas here is a carrier gas it is allowed here and this carrier gas usually an in inert gas and this is a, a reaction chamber it is usually heated directly or by some other uh, technique like uh, laser method okay uh, this complete you know uh, uh, reactants are made to undergo reaction by gaining heat okay so this is the unit keep in your mind okay this is a cold finger and this is a scrap a scrapper and this is a particle collection having background of this picture in your mind i think you will be able to understand it in a better way when a mixture of gaseous reactants are delivered into a reaction chamber inside the chamber the chemical reactions among the gas molecules and uh, uh, gas molecules are induced by input of energy such as heating uh direct heating or laser as well as by the help of the plasma frequently volatile by products that are removed by gas flow okay so through the reaction chamber okay so the product formed in the vapory state is allowed to condense and cooled with the help of the cold finger and collected in the form of the nano particles oh no so step by step methods uh, this method will be liking to understand in a uh, different steps 
first uh, the precursor is heated to vaporize using evaporation sources and the vapors are mixed with a carrier gas the metal organic precursors are transported into a bubbler then passed into a heated furnace under an inert atmosphere i mean by flowing by flowing helium argon or xenon type of the gas which are inert in their nature they will be carrying that into the reaction chamber and the nucleation of the source and growth of the nanoparticles are controlled by the type of inert gas you are going to use and by the way you are going to you know vary the pressure inside the chamber you are going to you know uh, tune up the size of the particles okay so by adjusting the gas flow rate the pressure difference between the precursor delivery uh, in the uh, to the main chamber as well as the temperature of the you know complete reactor okay so they are all going to decide about uh, the appropriate size of the nano materials okay so nano particles condense on the cold finger and they are removed with the help of this scraper that i shown in the diagram once again i would like to summarize here a suitable precursor is taken here and then it is heated and uh, the carrier gas it will carry the gaseous vapors formed here in this uh, cha uh, heating chamber and then you know here it is uh, actually the reaction uh, will be taking place here and uh, at a high temperature all the you know gaseous uh, molecules gaseous precursors they do interact each other very properly and arrive to a particular you know uh, clusters and uh, the nano size will be arriving in the form of the say vapors only they will be allowed to cool on condensation and uh, this is you know the condensation where the you know water is uh, uh, revolved continuously cold water and uh, by you know the particles are going to be condensed here and at the bottom here here a particle collection is uh, happening and thus you are going to easily obtain the nano particles in this way so what are the advantages that are associated with this method okay it can be used to prepare the nano particles not only metallic particles but even you can use metal oxide to form the nano particles okay and you can take uh, alloys and intermetallic uh, compounds you can choose ceramics to arrive at ceramic nano particles okay you can just use make use of semiconductors to arrive at the nano size semiconductor and you can make use of various composites to transfer them into nano sized particles whatever the you know material you are going to take okay that should be heated and made into transfer made to transfer into the vapory form and then you know you will be arriving at the nano particles with appropriate cooling of the nano particles and the chemical vapor deposition process is a continuous one and the production capabilities are very larger hence you can use it you know industrial level also you can make uh, you can adopt this system to produce nano particles okay so or else you can you know uh, deposit the nano film also on variety of surfaces okay so usually 20 gram per hour can be produced with this help of chemical vapor deposition okay in a small scale means uh, this much is the minimum one okay so applications it is used for the preparation of different man metallic nano particles like manganese nano particles iron nano particles cobalt man nano particles zinc nano particles etc even it can be used to prepare metal alloys uh, okay you can choose starting material as metal alloys like ferric nickel uh, alloy as well as ferric copper alloy you can choose as a starting material and you can arrive at the suitable nano particles 
and uh, the coated nanoparticles also can be you know arrived here like zinc oxide okay it is coated with uh, aluminum oxide or you can coat aluminum oxide with the zinc oxide okay so by supplying second precursor at the second stage of the reactor okay you can just allow you can arrange uh, you know number of uh, reactors and thus you know you can uh, pass the one sort of the nanoparticles or the another sort of the nanoparticles you can you know deposit and uh, you can uh, arrive at the suitable material as per your desire and uh, hydrothermal synthesis okay so uh, let us try to recall the methods of uh, synthesis whatever we have discussed okay till now first one is the synthesis of nanomaterials by the solgel process and uh, later we have studied the precipitation method and uh, we made our effort to understand gas condensation method and uh, later we made an effort to understand chemical vapor deposition method and uh, in our uh, next class we are going to study the hydrothermal synthesis and uh, then we are going to study you know thermolysis okay and uh, afterwards uh, we are going to study some of the nanomaterials already prepared you know like carbon nanotubes and uh, fullerenes and uh, say these uh, say nano uh, graphene and uh, nano composite material okay with this okay we are going to conclude this uh, module 3 in our next video thank you